Hey, this is Dave with Taboo Customs. Uh, today, we're gonna do a little video on how we nest parts on our plasma table. Uh, that's something that took us several months to figure out once we got our plasma table. And uh, to be honest, I, mean, we, I think we've come up with a pretty good uh, system, but it does take a few things to figure out how to, how to do that. So I figured we'd do a little video to try to help you out. So the first thing, first major thing you're going to need to figure out is, and for us, was how do we accurately locate a sheet on the table repeatably? Uh, with that, so we, we typically use a 4x4 four four sheet. We actually have a 5x5 five five table, but uh, all of our sheets are pretty much 4x4. Four four. And uh, the main thing I wanted to be able to do was create a consistent zero point on the material which typically we'll use this lower left hand corner when we're when we're standing at the computer um, and to do that the main thing we wanted to make sure was that we get this sheet of material square to both gantries and to do that we pretty much had to square up our table because this table here floats to the uh, to the gantry so we made some spacers that go down in between the table and the actual frame for the gantry and we did that on four different sides we put spaces in there just to make sure that this table stays square to the gantry and then uh, that the table doesn't move at any point which uh, you know with the downdraft table now attached to it is pretty much not going to go anywhere with that much weight uh, then what we had to do was try to square up the material to the table so what we did was we created these these plates we'll have two of these plates here and what we do is when we're going to put material on the table we'll put these plates here and actually they pretty much line up with uh, some of our spacers in the uh, you know between the the tray and the table itself and then when we put material on here we'll take this material and make a god awful sound as we pull it up and pull it against these spacers. So now in theory, this sheet here should be parallel to our, what is our basically our Y gantry in, in the way we look at it. So, so now this should be parallel to our Y gantry. We used to actually go here and, and run our tip over to the side of the material and, and line it up here and then run the run the uh, uh, gantry up and down and adjust it and it took us a little while and these here have worked out really well the only issue that we have seen is you can see here how close we sometimes get to the to the side one time one thing we'll have to do every now and then is if uh, you know, when we were actually cutting in this area, I actually just lifted that up and, and left it off a little way so I knew I wouldn't come, uh, come into contact with it because sometimes this tip, if you're real close, will, uh, will hit this. But now that it's already cut out there, we don't really have to worry about it. So once we have this material squared up here, we, in the future, if we don't want to, if we want to cut something different, because typically we only cut... Uh, like today, I've only got about 30 parts to cut, and it's out of three different materials. I'm not going to use up a whole sheet of any of those materials. So we'll be pulling sheets on and off, and those sheets will have a certain amount of parts already cut out of them. And this will help us, along with what we're going to show you on the computer, to be able to nest these parts in here and utilize as much of this sheet um, as possible. All right, for our next step here, what we need to do is, now that we've got this sheet squared up to our gantry, we'll need to set up our zero point in Mach 3. And to do that, we'll use our fancy little PS3 joystick, or our controller here, along with our joy to key that we've mentioned in other videos, and we'll set up our zero point. Now we, you know, when standing at the computer over there, we'll use this lower left corner here, always at our zero point. Uh, and as long as I maintain that on every sheet that I run, I can pretty much pull this sheet off, bring another sheet on, reset my zero point up, and, uh, and add more parts to it without having to worry too much about running into, uh, into other pieces. So what we'll do here is we'll move this until we basically line up the, uh, the nozzle there in the center of our X. And then we'll do the same thing with our Y 
And then from here, we'll actually go to Mach 3, and we'll zero this out in both the X, the Y, and you saw that I brought it down uh, to get our Z. And so that way, it'll set up this point here as zero on this sheet as we go and we lay parts out and nest parts out in, uh, in our, uh, our sheet cam. And we'll show you in a minute how that works. So as mentioned, we've gone in here, we've uh, zeroed out our X, Y, and Z in Mach 3. And so now we can go over to Sheet Cam and I can show you what we do in Sheet Cam. Now in Sheet Cam, you can see how we have this, this red box and that's our, our work area. And what this is, this is set up to a, a 4x4 uh, square. So it should emulate the material on our uh, physically on our table pretty closely. And in Sheet Cam, this corner down here is our zero point. So we've, we've set up our zero point in Mach 3, our zero point actually on the table, and now our zero point in Sheet Cam are all should correlate to the same point. Now if you don't know how to set up this square box, it's pretty, pretty easy. You go up here to Options, Job Options, and right here is where you can go in and you can adjust that size of the material. So you can see we have a 48 by 48 uh, inch piece, so that's what sets up this red box. So now let's go ahead and you can see that it's, you know, we don't have any material up. We'll go ahead and we'll pull up that sheet that we're going to start working on. We'll go to File, Open. Uh, we don't need to save any changes. Now the way we store our materials is we'll store them uh, by different gauges. And we, uh, we at any one time might have a couple of different sheets that we've been working on based on the size of parts that we need to cut. And uh, the way we do that is we'll put the sheet size and then we'll actually put the date so that way I kind of know um, where we're at and it helps me to uh, understand but you can see on 10 gauge this is what we're working on you know we've really only got one sheet in here so we pull that up and uh, you can see this sheet here compared to what we uh, we saw earlier in our videos matches so now we'll, I'll show you how we go in and we can add parts so uh, we've got all these parts here and what we do is we leave those parts showing so that way uh, we know what areas of our sheet have already been cut. Then we can go in, we can grab a, a new part, and I'll just grab any, any part here. And, uh, and we kind of will tailor where it's going to come into the drawing at uh, based on how much you know, of a sheet that we've used. I mean, it's not a problem to bring it in down here. Uh, if you bring it in down here, though, you're going to have to kind of go in here and grab it and pull it out of the way up to where it's at. So now what we can do is we can take this part and uh, we can nest it into the uh, into the sheet. And actually, let me uh, let me grab a different part that I actually need to need to cut. Um, so let's copy this part because we actually need one of these right now. So we will uh, we'll take one of these parts and we'll actually cut it. So let's try to figure out how to best nest it in here. Um, So we'll nest it in there, right about there, which gives us pretty good sheet utilization. So what we've done in all these other parts here that we have, what we've done is we've gone and we've disabled the operation. We left the parts up here in the parts, but we've disabled the operation. That way, uh, what happens when you do that is that the software when you go to actually create the program will ignore the rest of these parts when it creates the program now i'll show you that sometimes you will get an error because it's trying to let you know that hey you've got parts on there that aren't going to be on the program um, but for us here we we, we kind of ignore that error uh, generally and what we'll do is and i'll show you in mach 3 how we kind of make sure that we didn't have extra parts in there because sometimes if you add a lot of parts in here um, and you go to do another part like this, you sometimes have to go in here and you can see that this, uh, this part here is actually active. So we've already cut that part, so I have to disable all of these parts here because we cut all those parts earlier and we can't recut those. And you can see this part here is highlighted and that's the, uh, I think that's, excuse me, yeah, you can see the part down here is highlighted. And sometimes in sheet cam, I found it's a little bit difficult to tell uh, if your part is actually active or not. But you can 
see here it kind of doubles up the lines if you uh, let's see if we click off onto a another part you know you can see a double line here and that that typically indicates on here that your part is actually active to cut but being we've actually cut that part we don't want to cut it again because um, we've already used up that space so let's go through here make sure so you can see none of these parts here actually are uh, going to be cut if we run a program now the one part we do want to cut here and since we made a copy it's already got a operation assigned to it from here we go ahead and we activate that so right now based on this when I run this program and set up the G code it should only cut this part uh, what we'll do is and another main thing that you have to remember if you're going to use this process to do that frequently save your job um, because if you add some parts and don't save it and then for some reason lose your file um, you will lose you know you won't really know where these parts are at I mean I've gone back and entered the parts put the parts back in sometimes to try to get close uh, but you won't be as accurate as you'd be if you actually could see where you've honestly cut those parts already so we've got our one part active we've already saved the sheet so we'll go up and we'll create uh, the actual G code here so we use the same same type of scenario we use the 10 gauge and then the date for the uh, G code file and we do replace that over and over and you can see how it gives you some error messages it says no active operations no active operations no active operations so one thing you can do to check and make sure that you've done everything correctly <clears throat> is you can see up here that it's post-processing it's got one part we're going to be cutting one part so we know that that's correct uh, there's another way to check it because sometimes this is a little bit misleading we found if you've got a lot of parts on here it can be hard to tell you know do you have nine parts on there or four parts on there or it's it's a little bit tough um, so we hit OK we'll go over to our Mach 3 and we'll actually load our Ken gauge sheet so now up here in the upper right in our display you can see right here we've already zeroed out our material so we know that our material is right here this is our zero point so this is where uh, the plasma cutter is currently at and you can see relative to our sheet cam this part is the only part that's active that's going to be cut and uh, and it's pretty much in the in the correct location so we can go ahead and uh, and work on getting that cut we prepare to uh, to cut this uh, you can see that we've gone go ahead and we've we've put a few more uh, sheets over the open areas of our uh, uh, our sheet here and these are weld blankets so they uh, they won't catch fire um, what we've got an issue though is that you kind of see our, our not our tip is buried down here so what we will often do is go ahead and raise it up and kind of move it out of the way and a lot of times I just like to you know uh, backwards here move it over to roughly where we're going to be cutting and go ahead and get it started there now it's critical and we will typically watch the first part that we're going to cut pretty closely just to make sure that you know we didn't bump the material or we're not off and for for some reason uh, because there are a lot of things that have to come together you know the sheet the table the Mach 3 sheet cam, all of them have to have the same origin origin point uh, for this to work or it will be off. So go ahead and we'll come over to our Mach 3. We'll hear a cycle start. Now see, move it out of the way a little bit. So you can see it's gone up there and it's cut that one part pretty much exactly where we asked it to. So it's skipped over all this area, gone up there, cut this one part. So now as we move on and we start go to start cutting our other parts, we we'll just deactivate that part and we'll go in start adding our new parts 
and create a new G code file so that we can move on. So uh, in summary, the main thing is to make sure that you're able to consistently set up this zero point physically on the table and make sure that it, that zero point will match between the table, your Mach 3 software, and then your sheet cam here. And then another you know, thing to make sure remember is make sure that everything that you don't want to cut on the sheet is deactivated. And this has allowed us to be able to pull sheets on and off with relative ease and pretty quick setup. Thanks for watching. Uh, here in the future, we'll try to do a few more uh, videos on our plasma table. You know, a couple other things we've ran into and consumables and air and, and some of those things that uh, you know, small videos that might be able to help you out as you as you get started. Uh, as always, if this video has helped you, uh, a like or subscribe is uh, appreciated. And uh, keep a watch out for our other videos. Thanks.